and today I want to share some technique tips. I came up with a May technique workout because it was very requested. I receive a lot of questions about playing faster and getting better technique, better double tonguing, so I thought I would put it all in one place and give all of my best advice possible in this video. Best advice. There are a couple of really basic things that have to be in place for technique to be good. First is hand position. You want to find a hand position that lets your fingers move freely. If there's a lot of tension in your wrist, your elbow holding upwards, your upper arm, then you may have a difficulty moving efficiently in your hands. If you try putting tension in your arm, notice how much your fingers might grip the keys or they might have a strange bend in the knuckles. Start by just looking at your fingers on your flute. I'm just letting my fingers rest on top of the keys, thinking about my fingers feeling free and long and from there traveling down to the wrist and letting a little bit of wiggle happen there and down to the elbow, letting it hang and noticing how all of these things, if they feel loose, then my fingers feel very free and they can be very light and quick. From your collarbone beginning here, you want to let things feel very free and very long all the way down. The left upper arm is a culprit for a lot of tension, especially if your elbow comes quite high. You may notice that this muscle is very tense while holding this up. If this can be free and long, then there's less tension traveling all the way to the fingers. Try doing the same thing with the right hand, letting the fingers rest on top of the keys. You want to make sure that your fingers completely cover the hole if you have an open hold flute. If your thumb is adequately underneath your flute, then it might be a little bit more stable than if it's too far forward or too far back. So find a comfortable position there. Finding a comfortable C position with your hand and placing it on. And there will be slight minor adjustments here for getting your fingers to completely cover the hole. But you want to kind of start from this neutral C position. The same thing is true in this hand. If you have a lot of wrist tension, you might be pushing here with the wrist and really putting a lot of tension here. So see how loose your wrist can be. And you want to be realistic about having your fingers actually close the keys. If you can have your fingers moving and closing the keys with a free wrist, then you're more likely to be able to do it while actually playing. One more thing about hand position is that when you are playing, you want to make sure your fingers are not flying too high off the key. If you're using a video recording or a mirror, you can watch your fingers. If your finger ends up up here, it has a long way to travel. It also might fly down with a lot of force and have a lot of tension, so that lifting and going quickly and swiftly to the next note might be slowed down. So keeping everything close to the keys and as light as possible will help you with keeping it precise. You want your fingers to remain effortless the whole way through. One of the most important things to playing fast is making sure that your airstream is adequate. You will be able to hear every single note if your airstream is constantly changing and having to move or slow down or speed up depending on which note you're playing. For example, in one of my favorite Renault vocalises, here's how it sounds with aiming at having a constant airstream driving all the way through the end. One of the tips I put in the May Technique workout plan is to play with just air sounds. This will give a really good idea if your airstream is staying constant and full and open, if it's pushing towards the high register and dropping down to get to the low register. If you need to change a lot about your setup, including your embouchure and the speed of your air while you're trying to play faster, it ultimately might slow you down and make it sound a little more disjunct. You might not hear all of the notes, versus if your setup is conducive to playing every note beautifully and very resonant, then it will sound like you're going faster. Another one of my favorite things to do when making sure my airstream is fast enough is singing and playing. I definitely do this in Tafanel Gobera number four. If you're singing and playing one low pitch the whole way through, you're really opening your throat for resonance and you're making sure your airstream is very constant. Just like with slurring or with any other articulation while playing fast, double tonguing needs an efficient airstream. One of the things that I like to do with Tafnel Gober number one is sing and play into slurring into double tonguing. When I sing and play, my airspeed is optimal, so that's what I want to translate into my airstream while double tonguing. I want the same openness and constant speed. <laughs> I 
I'm sort of getting everything into place while singing and playing and making sure the roof of my mouth is nice and high and there's a lot of space within the mouth so that when I begin double tonguing, I don't lose any of the resonance and airspeed. And I find that it has a really good result. The same thing I do in Tafno Gubber number one with singing and playing, slurring, into double tonguing. I also do with Reichert number one and I do triple tonguing. <laughs> It's way easier to triple tongue when your airstream has been revved up by singing and playing. This is something I do every day. Tafano Gobert number one is also really good for making sure that your hands are steady and your flute is balanced if you're changing fingerings between both hands. Going from C to D in the middle register is a good way to find out if your right hand thumb is in optimal position. If you are playing middle D and releasing to C and your flute rolls back, then your thumb might not be in the right position. You might also already be sort of rolling in from yourself. Having a secure left hand position is also important. If you can play C to D without having any rocking motion, then your fingers are probably in a good position. This is another good general tip for technique, is noticing what changes when you play certain notes or patterns. I had difficulty in Peter and the Wolf excerpts, I think a lot of people will have difficulty. I had difficulty in that spot in the Peter and the Wolf excerpt, and I noticed that my left hand was getting more and more and more tense in my wrist area and I was working very hard in doing each of the exchanges. Every time it repeated, it got more and more tense. If I let go and I practice this very slow with a, just an easier wrist feeling, I was able to end up going faster and the sound was able to kind of resonate through. The other thing I was doing was slowing the airstream pushing on the beginning and slowing away and ultimately it made me feel like I was going really slow I was having a hard time playing the notes exactly how I wanted them to. So slowing it down and realizing those two things about airstream and resonance and how much tension I was adding and inhibiting it instead made it so much easier. If you can become an observer on a microscopic level while you're practicing anything that's difficult with technique, especially in all of these exercises, then you can kind of solve your issues and they'll translate through the rest of everything you do in music. In my Peter and the Wolf example, I noticed that my left hand was really tense and I simply slowed way down, practiced keeping my left wrist free, and ultimately the sound opened up. I was able to go really fast with a resonant sound all the way through. And then the run at the end was also free. I was messing it up before because by the time I got to it, my left hand was so tense that I couldn't make the fingering exchanges I needed to to make it come out smoothly. So freeing myself of tension made a huge difference. I highly recommend if you're learning something that's difficult technique-wise, learn it slowly as a tone exercise. If slow practice is really boring to you, start to think about getting your airspeed to be optimal, getting great resonance, preventing cracked notes, finding out which notes want to crack, making sure your fingers are moving in exactly, precisely the exact same moment, they're not too high off the keys. Focus on all of those factors while you're going slow, and I recommend doing it 30 to 40 times. When you end up going faster, those good habits will translate to a faster tempo and you'll have a much easier time sounding free and fluid when you're playing fast. Be aware that your hands might be more tense when you're playing faster and louder than when you're going slower and softer. So going slower really encourages really light, precise hands. If you're inching up the speed on your metronome, you want to continue to make sure your hands keep that freedom. And if you're increasing your dynamic, the same thing.
if it does. Check out my website, it's in the description box below for the May Technique Workout Plan on the blog. If you do share your Technique Workout Tracker or your Inspiration Calendar, I would love to see it. If you're sharing on Instagram, use hashtag Practice Room Revelations and you can tag me at Jolene Blue. I would love to see them, it makes me really happy. Thanks again for watching, bye! Hey everyone, thanks for okay. Fingers on both hands that adjust balance. Keen eye and optimization. Oh my god, oh my god. Keep saying optimization. The dog is barking, and it's because the plastic bag entered our yard.